Hello and welcome to this georeferenciation tutorial and I would like to show you how to create a georeference map from a scanned image or something like that uh, so you can use it in your GIS properly. We are using here G QGIS 2.16 or QGIS and um, we are also or I also downloaded an ancient or more or less very historical image of this of the village or uh, city called Creevy in the UK. And as you can see, it's a Russian map or a Russian uh, an image of a Russian map, and we don't have any coordinates here. So, but we know that this is the city of Creevy. And what we will do now is we will search for certain points on the map to um, or as ground control points um, to reference those points on that sentinel image to the points on the uh, scanned image. So these points are called ground control points and um, they need to be very distinctive. So it will be likely hard for us to find them on those maps because there are 60 years difference between those two images. Um, the Sentinel image is from the year 2016 and it was uh, sent to me using the projection system um, WGS84 as an ellipsoid and the projection is uh, transverse Mercator in the zone 30. So the EPSG code is 32630. Um, we need this information to define the projection for the that image that has no projection at all. So what we are doing here is we will first open up the raster georeferencer. There it goes. And we will load the raster file. So we will open up a raster. It's called Creevy Center in my case. And so there is nothing here. So we just have the pixel numbers. You can see them here on the lower right corner. And um, there is a pixel, of course, called 00 in the upper left corner. And you have the whole pixel dimension here from 1600 to 2300 pixels. So um, let's put them aside so we can see quite some details here that are also visible in the, in the original image. So there's this river going through the city. We have the cross of railways here or rail tracks. Then we have in the lower part of the city, we also have a second river coming down from the southeastern shore, which might or the southeastern side, which might be the southeastern. And this is, of uh, course, or this seems to correspond with that river here. And um, yeah, this is most likely the things we will use in our case. So, but Due to the fact that this image here is a little bit coarse, it has a ground resolution of about 10 meters, we will add another image, and this is the OpenStreetMap image, so a web mapping service. So therefore, we will go to VAP and use the, um, the Quick Map Services plugin, go to OSM, and there we will use the OSM TF landscape. The, so you can see, this uh, also corresponds to the to the upper image, the sentinel image, and we can just add it and play around with the transparency here a little bit. So you can see that is at the same location with the ground map or with the base map. So what we will do now is we will use this one. First, we need to check the transformation settings, and so let's go through them. The transformation type. You are BAST using polynomial 1, which means what is BAST, it is fast, somehow reliable, and we don't have a very distorted image here. So it's not it's not a non-vertical image, and we don't have any, or we don't take into account any distortion of lenses or whatever. So it's fast and easy, and we can reproduce it, and we can say there is, or we can name the error we will do, or we will we will get by using polynomial one. If you have a much more complex image, which means complex by some sort of lens def uh, defects or some sort of distortion coming from the surrounding or a bit uh, or high topography, then use polynomial three or even thin plate spline. Then coming to the resampling method, as the pixels will be distorted, we need a decision 
how the RGB value of the of the targeting pixel is composed of. So nearest neighbor will always give you some sort of some strange artifacts and will result in some rectangles you don't want to see there. So I'm always using cubic or even cubic spline, which makes it which is fast enough and also reliable enough to give you a nice proper image in the end. So we will go with cubic and the target SRS should correspond to this image here. So we will get the coordinates from here and paste it as reference coordinates here. So um, take that into account. As the um, target, we will use creepy center um, projected, or let's put the PSG code, code inside there. So creepy center 32630. So this is okay for the moment. And now we are taking, or now we are searching for the ground control points. So I've already mentioned this river here and I was searching for that lake, but the lake seems to no, seems to disappear here. So we cannot use it anymore. But there's another feature I would like to, uh, to show you. And this is quite um, good to see here in that map. So, um, just look here now, I'm switching off the Sentinel and going over to the OSMTF landscape. You can see, see that shape here, which corresponds to this one. Then you have this one and that curve again. The curve here will be our first reference point. So I will use the new, at new point, make a click here, and also choose from map canvas. And we will, we will also mark this point there. So this is our first ground control point. It is added here. And now we will search for a second one. The second one um, I was using, or well, I was seeing, was this river in the lower, uh, lower left corner here. So let's zoom in here a little bit. And you can see that the map is quite blurry at that point, but we will use this bridge. Be careful always with those streets, because streets are more or less generalized in the map, and they are not as wide as this map suggests here. So we will use the, the inner part of, the, uh, of that street as a reference point. So somehow the, the place where the street crosses the river, and we will also yeah, assume that the river was not changing so much, and the street was not changing as well. And we will also use this center point here as a reference point. So this is, now we have two reference points. And for polynomial uh, with degree one, we need at least three reference points. So let's go somewhere else. As you can see here in that map, there's a second or third location quite visible. That is in the lower corner here. So and as I said, the image is 60 years old, so it might be that the streets have changed. So be always careful with that. Big streets are not changing that much as little streets, but you can see here that old building marked here with a number 14. It is quite stable, so it is here located, and you have that big street going from north to south, and that little street here crossing. So we'll use this crossing here again, as a reference point. So I'll just mark it here, directly in the middle. From map canvas, we will do the same. Okay, so now we have three points here. And you can see there are already some residuals, which, which comes from the computational effort. So if, you, if you're using those, um, those transformation, we we um, seem or we were searching for the best polynome to fit that computation. So we will add a, a fourth point and now we need to find or now we need to search um, together because I've already done it with three points but not with four points. And you can see here there's another crossing over here over the street with that railways and maybe we can use this one as well. So let's check it on the map. You 
just that we will we see the same or oh no we see a different situation so this is not not as curved as here so we might be or this might be not the best choice to do and to work with so let's go to another location maybe let's use this crossing here there's also a new rounding here So I think this might be a good situation here. So this street, the Henry Street, it's also called here the Henry Street. Um, yeah, Henry um, might be a good situation. So we will create another point here. And from the map canvas. Okay, so this is now our fourth point. And you can see there is quite a, a residual of about 1 to 2.5 pixels, but this is cool for the moment. So we will use this polynom, and we, we just for the sake of simplicity, we'll save the, the points. Now, now they are saved, and we will run the uh, algorithm now. So the georeferenciation was uh, finished, correctly and now we will use we will add the, the resulting image to our map we can close this now and let's zoom out, out a bit and what we can do now we can alter the uh, we can alter the transparency of the resulting image to set to 40 to see how good we fit into this um, map from Sentinel. So we have a little distortion over here. So it seems like uh, there is a bit of a movement on the lower right corner, but we don't have any checkpoint here on the lower right corner. So this might be due to the fact that we added an another another point in the end so this goes a little bit upwards here but still we are quite cool with the image and the referenciation so i'm very glad that this worked out quite good and now you can play around and add some more ground control points or even um use spline interpolation for um for a try but this is it at the moment so thank you very much for watching take care and goodbye